Hi, Matt Dragon here for Precise RF. This video demonstrates the magnetic loop antenna, specifically the new Precise RF HG3 Stepper Tuned Mag Loop Antenna, MLA. This new MLA delivers unprecedented capability, performance, and convenience for a remotely tuned MLA. It employs a proven, accurate, and repeatable stepper motor design. Band selection, remote tuning, including optional loop rotation, is controlled by a microcontroller driving a high-resolution stepper motor. An integrated digital SWR bridge allows auto-tuning based on an SWR scan. This ensures compatibility with most radios. Hi, I'm Roger Stenbach, the W1RMS and Precise RF, and welcome to my lab. Today I'll be demoing the new HG3 QRO high power magnetic loop antenna. Now this demo is just an overview of the basic operations. You'll need to refer to the manual for connections and for more advanced operations. For this video I have the actual antenna in my lab right over there in controlled conditions. Now in actual deployment you have to maintain the proper safe distance when running at high power, as is covered in our manual. Okay, let's get going. Now for this demo, we'll be using an ICOM 718 transceiver, and of course our HG3 Plus controller. And for the QOO operations, we'll use an Ameritron AL 811H amplifier. Okay, for this demo we've got the uh, transceiver RF out connected to the controller's RF input and the controller's RF output is connected to the uh, linear amplifier RF in and its RF out kind of goes directly to the uh, loop antenna as you can see and the uh, controller controls the position of the vacuum capacitor through the line that goes from the QOO tuner to the controller. So that's our basic setup right here. Now here's the front panel. It's pretty straightforward. We have the F1 through F4 keys, tuning knob, SWR indication, and of course the on and off switch. When you first turn this controller on, it'll ask you, uh, do you want to initialize the tuner? Well, what does that mean? Well, it means that it sets the tuning capacitor to a non position. So it's synchronized with whatever is displayed on the front panel. So if you're not sure, the default is to say yes. So let's do that now. Here we go. And now the tuner positions itself to a preset capacitance, which happens to be 20 meters. The stepper motor turns, little LED comes on, and it positions itself to the 20 meter position. That's all there is to it. Once indexing is complete, the home page appears. The top row shows what band you're in. The second row shows the actual steps and the 38.00 PF is the capacitance of the vacuum capacitor. The bottom row shows the band for F1, automatic tuning for F2, mode for F3, and help. Let's press the help key and you'll notice that there are several pages of help that explain the basic operation of the controller. Alright, go cancel. Now the uh, band switch is located with F1. Let's push it. And to select the band, you notice the two arrows, left arrow, right arrow. So this is a 20 meter band right now. So let's go ahead and take it to the 17 meter band, or we can take it down over here. Let's say to the 30 meter band. And while it's tuning, it gives you the message please wait. So we're going down to 40 meters now. Uh, there you go. Now it comes to a stop right here. For this demo we'll be using 20 meters. So let's set it to 20 meters. 
Yes, 30 meters coming up. And then here's 20 meters. Now for this demo, we've set our transceiver to 20 meters in this particular case, 14.151 megahertz. And um, it's as good as any because that's where the controller indexes to. Let's take a look at the controller now. And there you see it's 20 meters. So how do you tune it? Well, there's several ways to tune it. One, you can just use the knob and tune it, or you can use the band selection over here. All right. One way to tune it is to listen for the maximum noise that you get on the radio. And here's how that works. So let's suppose we want to tune to the 20 meter band, but happen to be 30 meters right now. So the best way to do that, now listen to the noise on the radio. Take it to 20 meters. You notice the noise came up. And we can also increase it for peak noise right there. Well, you can have the controller automatically tune the antenna for you. So from the home page, uh, you press auto and it asks you to transmit a low power signal. Notice also over here we have an SWR and power meter to give you an idea what, how this correlates with what you're seeing on the controller. So let's do that now. It says transmit a low power signal and we do. Okay, so now we are transmitting and we press OK. So what just happened there? Well, the controller scanned the band for the lowest SWR. That's why you saw that meter dip slightly as it found the lowest SWR and set itself. Well, in this particular case, we ended up with an SWR of 1 to 1, which happens to be an equivalent radiated power of 100%. Let's take a look at what the, the capacitor does during auto-tuning. So we've selected auto-tuning, and uh, we got to transmit our signal, and let's see what happens. Okay, what happened there was the capacitor tuned through the band, found the lowest SWR, and returned to its stop there, and guess what? We got an SWR 1.1.0. All right, let's do that again, but this time let's pay attention to the bar graph, the SWR bar graph when we do this. So, we select auto. It says transmit a 1 to 5 watt signal, and we do. And we say okay. Notice the bar graph goes to the red, finds the lowest SWR, and then stops. Well, the SWR is 1.0 to 1, so any indication in the green or lower is a good SWR reading. Okay, so that kind of the basic operation, how to tune the HG3+. Plus. Let's take a look at some of the other features. How does the user set its span? Because it could vary on conditions, space them or the location of the loop is, and your band preferences. So we use the band switch. So we just press band over here. And we have three choices here. We can either tune the band, we can set the band, or say OK. Well, let's set the band. All right, so we have the choice now to set the user bands. And you just say press Enter right there, yes, F3. And that's our band position. But let's suppose uh, we want to use the factory default band positions. They may not be right, but uh, they are the factory defaults. So you go set, and it says defaults. All right. You can see the capacitor moved slightly, and that's a slightly different band position 22282. Okay. 
All right, let's suppose we wanted to change that manually to some other position. We find that's the best band position what we want to use. So we go set and uh, say yes, that's the user band position. And guess what? It saved that the band position. And by the way, if you were to shut it off, take a look at the uh, step number 22881. Now, little s right there says we saved that band position. So if I shut it off now, the unit is shut off. So if I turn it back on, it says, well, do you want me to index? Well, if you want to use that last band position, of course you don't want to index. So you just say no. And there's the same band position, 22881, and it's saved. That's how simple that is. All right, uh, let's tune in WWV. We can always get a signal there. Band is pretty dead today. So here we are, it's right at 30 meters. So let's just tune it on over here. 30 meters and see what we get. All right. Okay, let's talk about the mode switch. So we have actually three basic modes. This is the standard tuning mode, which you can get from the home page. Next mode we have over here is the rotator mode. If you have a rotator connected, now you can turn it clockwise and counterclockwise. So he is turning it clockwise. See it's turning. And then if you turn it long enough, it warns you that you've reached the end of the uh, rotation. And let's turn it the other way. Next mode we have is the external resonator. This allows you to add an additional loop for 80 meter or 60 meter operation, or perhaps you have another capacitor you can add as an additional resonator. The capacitor value is shown as a percentage rather than the absolute value. So you can see right there. Now, so far we've been talking about uh, transmitting on your magnetic loop antenna with your transceiver only. But what if you wanted to uh, transmit at higher power levels like 800 watts, 1000 watts, 1500 watts? Well, for that you would need, of course, a linear amplifier. Now, most magnetic loops wouldn't work at that power level. However, the HG3 QRO loop uses a vacuum capacitor and it has the capability to transmit that, that kind of power. Now, because the SWR bridge is connected to the input side of any connected external linear amplifier, when tuning a loop antenna, the linear amplifier circuitry will interfere with the tuning. For that reason, all tuning should be made with the linear amplifier bypassed. On most linear amplifiers, bypassing is done with the transmit switch, so it needs to be set to bypass. All right, tuning is done just as before. We'll auto-tune, we'll transmit, and press OK. Once the antenna is tuned, we set the appropriate power on the transmitter right here. And we'll turn the amplifier to operate, and we are ready to go on the air. at full power. Hi, thanks for taking the time to watch our little video on our new HG3 Plus QRO Magnetic Loop Antenna. Remember, there's a lot more information in the manual. Should you be interested in our products? Well, don't hesitate to call or log on to PreciseRF.com. 
This is Roger Stenbock for W1RMS and Precise RF. 73's to you.